Why, hello there, everybody, and welcome to uh, this video. So today, we are going to be talking about Creality's Hallet Sky Resin Printer. This is an 8.9 4K mono LCD resin printer, and it costs about $1,000. All right, now, for full disclosure, Creality did send me this resin 3D printer, so that way I can review it. However, they did not pay me anything. I did not sign no contracts. There is no requirements. This is going to be a full, honest review. I've had this machine for a few months now, and all the prints that you guys have seen from my Patreon, such as this tank right here that we're printing and then putting together and painting, have all been printed out from this printer here. I've done all my test printing. I've done all my main printing on this machine here. This has been the workhorse for the past about four months, just like nonstop printing on this bad boy. So we have some things to talk about and let's go ahead and dive into the review and talk about this machine and what you get with it. So let's dial it back and start from the beginning. All right, now the box of this comes in it's pretty large and heavy so it is a little over two feet tall and a little over a foot and a half wide and it weighs just as much as I should lose which is about 50 pounds and it's afraid of wet removing it from the box you are greeted with lots of plastic foam and cardboard and I have to say this is very nice packaging but don't just stop at second base we got to get the rest of those layers off her Hmm, not a bad looking body we got here. Nice and sturdy. Okay, anyways. So underneath that hood, we are going to have an extra FEP sheet, which is very nice. A VAT cover, which I don't ever use. A power cord and a nice little goodie bag with some tools that we will look at now. All right, now in our little goodie bag, I'll just briefly cover this. You're going to get two scrapers, one metal, one plastic. You're going to get a painter's brush just in case you want to paint resin all over your house. At the same time, you're going to get some Allen wrenches for your leveling plate and assembly. Also, you're going to get a 16 gigabyte USB, a calibration card, and then your user manuals. And of course, not to forget your resin funnel filters, so that way you can filter out your misprint resin from the vat back into the bottle. All right, now here's a brief look at the vat. As you can see, it holds quite a bit. I do recommend filling it up to the recommended level because if you get a misprint you don't want to empty all of that out and yes it has a nice little feet at the bottom so that way the fep doesn't touch a flat surface all right now here's a brief look at the z-axis as you can tell this bad boy is built like a tank i've never had any wobble or any issues with the z-axis it is tough all right, so let's move off to the build plate. I have to say the fit and finish on this is also very good, as it should be for a machine of this price. I did about two and a half months of printing nonstop before I had to re-level it. All right, now looking at the back of this machine, we are going to be putting on this lid, and this is a hinge system, so that way it's a flip lid rather than those big bucket lids that cover the entire machine. I really don't like those because when it comes to doing a lot of work, pulling that thing on and off and having to place it somewhere gets very annoying annoying very quickly. A system like this is much appreciated where all you have to do is flip the lid, it stays in place, you can do your work and then close it and it's magnetically held tight so that way it has a nice snap once you put it into place. Now, when it comes to the little screen on the front, we can click settings here. You can see all the different things that you can do here. You can update the settings as well. This is the updated user interface. You can change uh, the language, the skins. You'll see me change the skin here. So once I hit the colorful, you're going to notice that all the buttons have just random different colors on it. I don't know if there's other different custom skins on this machine. I haven't tried. In fact, this is the very first time I'm even using these custom skins. But once we go to print settings, this is where things get pretty good. You can see all the files on my USB. You can also store files on the machine as well, which is pretty cool. All right, now when we go to print a model, you can click the little settings button here. And what's really cool about this is you can see the initial exposure, turn off delay, exposure time, rising height, motor speed, and the bottom exposure layers. What's cool about this is that you don't have to change any of this in the slicer software. This machine does it all right here. And the cool thing about this is, let's say that you just got done printing a model and your exposure time wasn't high enough, so it was a failed print. Well, you don't have to go run back to your computer and change anything you can just up the exposure time right here and print the same file. It's really cool. All right, now leveling this bad boy is super simple. All you have to do is take the build plate, place it on the Z-axis and tighten the knob at the top. Then you're going to loosen the four screws on the side of the build plate. Then you're going to place the calibration card on your screen. In the menu, just hit leveling and then it's gonna drop down. Once the build plate drops all the way down, you're gonna tighten the four screws, then you hit the auto home button on the menu, and then you're done, it's leveled. 
And the cool thing is that this also comes with a screen protector already installed. All right, so I ran a test matrix and it came out pretty good. Now this is ever so slightly overexposed and I actually like to start printing models with those types of settings because I would rather have a completed model come out successfully that is slightly overexposed rather than underexposing a model looking for the best detail ever. And then if you have support failures because you're underexposing or you're really trying to push those limits, now you gotta do a bunch of cleanup. So again, I would rather have an overexposed model, which at these levels, your diabetic eyeballs can't tell the difference between this and, you know, 0.2 seconds less and, oh, it's got to be, you know, super perfect, whatever. So anyways, let's take a look at some of the models that I have been printing throughout the months. Everything that you've seen there is probably about 30%-ish of what I have actually printed. There's been a lot of other prints behind the scenes. However, I do want to shill here for just a second. Everything that you just seen there, plus a lot more, is available on my Patreon. It's just 15 bucks to sign up, and you get everything that you've seen there. All STL files, all the tanks are hollowed out, everything is pre-supported. Yes, that's right, you get everything. I don't rotate things out of my Patreon, so whatever I release, you get to download all of it for 15 bucks. It's really good and I also release new files every single month and that is actually what I've been primarily using this printer for is my work that I do with Patreon and printing out these things ensuring that things work. But anyways, I will say this printer has been one of the better printers that I have used. I haven't had anything break down and blow up or anything crazy. I haven't had really any problems with the machine. Everything has worked very well. Everything is built solid. It doesn't wobble. One thing that I will say though for me personally, this machine is a little loud. Out. I think it's just that big chunky Z axis. When this thing goes up and down, it's just. So I would actually recommend putting this in a closet or downstairs in the basement or maybe in a garage or something that has a little bit of soundproofing so that way it isn't so loud. I had to put this thing on a block of foam and everything else just to try to quiet down a little bit and it has worked, but it gets to the point where literally I can go downstairs and faintly I can still hear the humming of it going up and down. Now to me, it's really not that big of a deal, but for some of you guys out there, maybe that stuff will like, I don't know, trigger your senses where you're like, shut that damn thing off. Well, then you're probably gonna wanna put it in the garage where you're not gonna hear it or maybe down in the basement if you're way up on the other floor. So that's one issue that I would say that's somewhat of a negative, but for me, I don't care because the whole thing is supposed to be a workhorse and it has done very well in that field. However, let's talk about the gigantic elephant in the room. This thing right now, I think it's like $970. Basically, you might as well say about $1,000 once you consider, you know, taxes and everything else that has to go into this. But I think they are offering it as a discount now. I've seen it go lower, maybe around like 800 and something, but I'd 
seems to fluctuate a lot. It goes up and down. So I guess it's just whenever you can catch it. So for this much money for a 4K printer, who is this really for? Do I recommend this, etc., etc.? Well, this is what I'm going to say about this. This is not a machine for somebody who's like, hmm, I want to test 3D printing and uh, maybe I'll just give it a try or something because I've seen one of Gomez's videos. I wouldn't recommend it to you. Now, is it user-friendly? Yes, it is actually user-friendly. The, uh, the whole UI when it comes to little touchscreen is really nice. The whole machine overall is very simple. I think this is a very well-crafted, very well-done machine overall. It is user-friendly. However, it's the price point is the reason why I don't recommend it because I don't want to recommend somebody, you know, a thousand dollar machine and then he tries out 3D printing and he's like, ah, I don't think I really like this hobby too much or anything else like that. It's like, that's just ridiculous. And I think most people would understand that if you're going to test a hobby or a new field, you're going to get something that costs a lot less. And there are a lot of machines out there well below this price point that yes, they do print just as good as this machine and they they cost like, you know, four or $500. So that's a significant drop compared to this. So why would you actually buy this machine? I would only recommend this machine to somebody who's going to do like a print farm and or something very professional where this is going to be a workhorse. This is designed to be printing like nonstop. That is what this printer is for. It's like a business basically. It's not made for like just your hobby guy. I mean, you can use it for a hobby. If you got the money and you want to buy a good quality printer that's going to last you some time, yeah, I would say go for it. It's, it's actually a good printer. Now, a lot of people want to move into like the 6Ks, the 8Ks. There's nothing wrong with that. I find the print quality with this more to my liking. It's, it's, I'm satisfied with this. Now, it's not to say that 6 and 8K, you know, can't do better. That's fine. But it's going to be like the diminishing returns on that. Do I really need that? Not really. But do I recommend those other printers? Sure. You could definitely go out there and get plenty of other great printers for even less than this. But that's what I'm saying is that those tend to be, I would say, I don't want to say that those those ones are just kind of like super consumable printers, but I would have to say that using um, other 4K, 2K, and 6K printers, this has hands down been the highest quality one. I've seen this thing has been a tank. I should have a picture here of showing you the FEP sheet when it was wearing out because, I, again, it was just print after print after print. And the FEP sheet is a consumable. Eventually, you will have to replace that. But look at how dirty and disgusting this FEP sheet is. This is me after I'm cleaning it. And can you believe that these models right here were still printed through that FEP sheet? That's how good this light source is. It works off of like reflecting it and so it makes a more even um, light source throughout the whole screen so that way it's not more concentrated it in the middle or wherever the LEDs happen to be. It's like an even dispersion throughout the whole screen. So I think that's probably why this thing was able to print so well. Did I lose a little bit of quality because of how dirty and filthy the FP sheet was? Yes, it was. Uh, the, the quality went down just a little bit, but honestly, it was still very, very usable. I could still print even infantry and it really wasn't that big of a deal. It just looked like it was slightly overexposed and lost maybe like, I want to say like 10% detail. I could still have printed on that probably for about another two to three weeks and still got decent results and had usable models that were like infantry models. So this is a great printer. It has a great light source. I can't say too much, you know, more about it other than it's a great printer. It's only negative is literally the price. The price is just too high because a thousand dollars is ridiculous because you could basically buy two printers and have a two printing farm going on this. I don't know how long those printers will last in comparison to this one. Like I said, this thing is built like a tank, but that's up to you. But okay, guys, that's going to end my review here. Hopefully you enjoyed it and I'll have more for you later.